Dante Williams and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. What's going on guys, alltalkradio.net, boxingtalk.com, and welcome to the Dante's Boxing Nation show. I am your host Dante, and my co-host today is Norn Radical, and my man Eagles World has one of the best boxing channels on YouTube. Matter of fact, I only watch a handful of channels on YouTube, and this is one of the channels I watch. Very good channel. All right, so welcome to the show, guys. We got a lot to talk about, but before we get into all the boxing news, I want to go ahead and let everybody know about the very first Box Fan Expo that's going to be out here September 13th. It's going to be at the Las Vegas Convention Center. It's going to be everybody there, okay? So I'm, me and Norm, we're going to be working that event. So you guys want to come out, hang out with us. Um, this is going to be Mike Tyson, Aaron Pryor, Lennox Lewis, Sean Porter. Everybody is going to be there, okay, guys? So come check it out. That is the weekend of uh, the Mayweather fight, all right, which we're going to talk about that Mayweather news as well. So let's get into it, guys. So we just had a terrific, a very good fight this past weekend. Mm. I'm telling you, man, the fights are getting better and better, huh, Norm? Ooh, that's man, what I'm talking about. Man, I'm, I'm saying, man, Crawford knocks out Yoriokas Gamboa in the ninth round. It was a great fight. Eagle, what were your thoughts on that? Did that fight play out the way you thought it would? I definitely predicted Terrence Crawford to win. I didn't think he was going to look as exceptional as he did with the four knockdowns and the actual stoppage. I knew it was a possibility. Didn't know if it would happen, but it did, and the start was born. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> nice. What did you think about it, Norm? Listen, uh, this is shaping up. You know, we, we – we, Report card time. It's midterm. You know what I mean? We're, we're at mid-year, and uh, 2014 is shaping up real good for the sport. I mean, we, we done had a, a nice crop of really um, good bouts with, uh, you know, you, you couldn't predict the outcome on, on, on um, you know, a, a, a lot of these last big fights that um, have just occurred. And, um, yeah, great performance by uh, Crawford. I mean, just brilliant, brilliant adjustments during the course of a fight, you know what I mean? For, you know, a young fighter, that's what you like to see. Um, you know, great performance by Gamboa. Salute to both fighters. Brilliant performance by uh, Terrence Crawford. Yeah. Great. And, and Noren, how sick was it that he was able to switch to southpaw <laughs> and dominate the fight, uh -huh, switch uh -huh. to southpaw? Because we see people do it, mm -mm. but they're not comfortable, and, and it doesn't really, it's not really a game changer. Uh, but he switched very comfortable. Uh, how, how sick was that? Bro, this is what we talk about <laughs> often. Is again when you make the distinction between you know I, I mean salute to anybody that steps in the ring that got the intestinal fortitude to step in the ring, but obviously like Floyd says, like Mayweather says, it's levels to this. You know what I mean? And uh, we basically saw you know uh, uh, the difference in levels between you know an, an average fighter, a good fighter, and, and somebody who is exceptional. You know what I mean? To to make that transition to go from from orthodox to southpaw uh, in the fight to see to see that that is what the adjustment w what that was needed at that time to pull out the victory. I mean, you know, this this kid has something. Crawford has something. We're going to be watching him for hopefully for many years to come. A absolutely. And also um, it was reported that it was a huge success all the way from, um, you know, the ring results to the crowd that showed up. I, got, I believe it was 11,000 people that showed up. And also it was number two, the most watched TV fight on cable this year so um that's big man that's big it is big. is terrence crawford the next big thing in the sport ego i definitely think he is i mean i told a lot of people on my channel i think it was march of last year it's a kid is someone to watch for i mean he beat danny garcia beat mikey garcia in the amateurs and it looks like he's improving and one thing that i told people terrence crawford had underrated heart and it was mm -hmm. apparent when he fought Bradis prescott mm -hmm. on a two-week notice on television, it was going to be on Showtime. He had two weeks to prepare for that fight against British Prescott, a known puncher, knocked Amir Khan out. Two weeks to prepare, and it was against his manager. I don't know if he stood with Cameron Duncan, but it was against Cameron Duncan's wishes at the time. And he said, you know what, I want to fight this guy. Tough Colombian, big puncher. Took it two weeks, and he looked good in that fight. And had really, British Prescott was just really puzzled and didn't know what to do. He looked frustrated, though, mm -hmm. the whole way, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. No doubt. 
Now, um, Eagle, what about Gamboa, man? Can he recover? Was was he just in the ring with someone that was on a whole nother level and, and you know, he would have did better against other fighters? What do you think about Gamboa? Where does he go from here? I think, first of all, I think Gamboa needs to move back down and wait. I don't think. I think he kind of rushed and made the jump to 135. I think he'll be more natural at 130. And, honestly, unless you're going to do what Terrence Crawford did, unless you possess the intelligence and experience and the chin and everything that he showed us, the ambidextrous style, I mean, it's going to take a good fighter to beat Gamboa. You can't just be a mm-hmm. chump and, and a bum and expect to beat him because he showed tremendous heart. Even after he was knocked down, I think it was in the fifth round, he got back up and he fought strong mm-hmm. on, and on like wounded legs in the sixth round. Mm-hmm. So every time he was hurt, he tried to make the best possible adjustments. He had Terrence Crawford hurt actually in the round that Terrence Crawford stopped him Absolutely. in the ninth round. So um, I think Gamboa can bounce back. A lot of people, one thing I noticed in the sport of boxing, a lot of people take other people's wins, and they think, oh, Mikey Garcia will beat Gamboa because Terrence Crawford did. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Styles make fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gamboa is Gamboa. Gar- Garcia is Garcia. So Garcia has a shot, but it's still a good fight. And because Crawford beat him, doesn't immediately mean that Mikey Garcia will beat him. No. It's just two different people. I agree. And, and I think that um – Gamboa, he just uh, well with Terrence Crawford, he's just a versatile fighter, like Ego just said, you know, with the ambidexterity, you know what I mean, by displaying that, and uh, you know he has a lot of versatility to his game, and um, you know Gamboa just ran into somebody who could you know do a little bit more, you know what I mean, figure out a little bit more in the ring. Definitely doesn't, you know, um, no way discredits Gamboa because I mean Gamboa was outboxing him for the first four yeah. rounds, you know yeah. what I mean, to to his credit, you know what I mean. So again, it was just a great fight, and let me let me say this too. And this is, is going to shock some people. It's going to shock some people right now. But I want to give um, a little uh, big up to uh, um, one of the top rank officials, one of the, one of the guys at top rank, uh, Todd DeBuff. Or DeBuff. Um, he, he made an interesting comment after the fight saying that he compared uh, Crawford's win over Gamboa to uh, Mayweather's win back in the day over um, – Gennaro Hernandez. Now, nice. I, I I don't see – well, I understand what he's saying. I don't necessarily agree that it was as spectacular a, a, a victory. I don't think uh, Terrence put on as great a performance as Floyd did, um, you know, some years back. But what I do like about what um, Mr. DeBuff did is that he actually took the time – to big up one of the top ranked fighters, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I I wouldn't see that that Bob would do that, you know, unless it's one of the, you know, one of the usual usual suspects, you know what I mean. And and I like that from Todd DeBuff. You know, to me, that's a small sign, but it's a it's a good sign. You know what I mean? It, it's it's been a lot of signs lately. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. that um that things are going towards the right direction. Exactly. Like I said, exactly. You got Oscar De La Hoya, of course. Like I said, working with top rank now, mm-hmm. and he's um. He, he really wants to make a lot of the biggest fights out that could be uh, uh, made. Now, um, I wanted to say kind of in response to that, I, I said in the video that I made that um, this fight reminded me a lot of, of Sugar Ray Leonard versus Hearns. Mm. And, and um, I felt that uh, in the beginning of the fight, uh, Gamboa, he was playing the role of Sugar Ray Leonard. And, uh, but at the same time, I know this sounds crazy, but I believe Crawford was playing the role of Sugar Ray Leonard too. <laughs> the reason why – is because Crawford, for the first time, he had to deal with adversity. He was getting out box. He was frustrated. That's exactly how Sugar Ray Leonard was against Hearns until he hurt Hearns, and then that's when it turned around. Same thing happened with Crawford. Once Crawford hurt Gamboa, then the fight turned around, and it was his fav- It was in favor of him. Then Crawford, he started to use that reach like Tommy Hearns, and he started to outbox the shorter, slicker boxer. So, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of how I've seen it. But um, it was, like I said, a very, very impressive performance. Now, let me also go ahead and jump into this. Uh, Larry Merchant. Larry Merchant, he just uh, recently said that he wants to see Gam- uh, I'm sorry, Crawford versus Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. And some people ask me, you know, well, who cares what Larry Merchant thinks? <laughs> Believe it or not, a lot of these people in the media, they do care what he thinks. Mm. You know, unfortunately <laughs> or fortunately, whatever the case may be. But nevertheless... I think that's a terrific fight. I think it's a terrific matchup. Before we talk about how that fight will play out, tell me, what is the best chances of that fight coming to fruition, Ego? The best fight? Um, the fight that I really want to see probably the most is Canelo Lore. 
I think that's an excellent, excellent stylistic matchup. You got Canelo, who he he seems kind of deceptive. You think he's not that good, and then he fought an Austin Trout fight. He showed some head movement and some tools that he didn't really use in other fights. So I'm like, okay. And in the Mayweather, it was pretty much a shutout, but then he bounced back strong against Angulo, and Angulo thought he was going to have to chase Canelo around the ring. He brought the fight to Angulo, so I like how they adapted in that particular fight. Then you got the slick Cuban tactician. I mean, he comes from the Cuban school of boxing. I did a video, too. He looks really big. He looks like he's in shape. Edis Lonnie Lord looks significantly bigger, so if he carries his speed up, I mean, I think it's going to be a great fight. And it's a fight, in my opinion, that really means something at 154. Mayweather, not really a permanent resident at 154. You got guys like Demetrius Andrade, and he hasn't really fought the level of competition in the pros. This fight, they both have like good resumes, and I, I'm really just looking forward to this fight. Absolutely. Go go ahead. Uh, go yeah, ahead. and 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 ego. Let me let me add because um yeah that's we we definitely wanted to get to those. But um, what do you think about the potential of a Pacquiao and Crawford fight? Oh, a Pacquiao and Crawford. Yeah. Um, because I want to see it, but mm. I'm not a big as as far as that particular fight. I want to see it, but I think that fight should marinate a little bit. No doubt. I'm not a, no a doubt. big fan of fighters rushing just because they they had a stellar performance mm -hmm. and then rushing up and jumping through weight divisions and 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 that kind of thing. I think he's grown out of the 135 pound division. However, I think that fight can marinate and let him defend and fight at 140, perhaps, and then move up to fight Pacquiao. But I mean, if Pacquiao's running out of opponents, I mean, I'm not going to complain. I want to see it. No he's doubt. a very gifted fighter, both of them. So I would definitely watch it. No different, doubt. Different styles. And and I actually I actually agree pretty much with with just about pretty much what you just said, um, because um, the the thing is is Larry Merchant just brought it up as Dante was just saying. Um, he says that he now he wants to see Crawford fight Pacquiao. And you know I I, I like I said I agree with what you said. It is kind of rushing Crawford along a little bit. But again to go back to uh to the Buffs uh um comment, it's 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 good to see these guys kind of building somebody else's career even though they're still building it off the Mayweather name but you know they they hey they built a superstar off of Mayweather's name so you know it's, it's it's just good to see them comparing somebody else you know and and I think from that comparison even from from the buff statement that kind of led to what Larry Merchant or was kind of like an introduction to now Larry Merchant saying oh he wants to see Crawford and Pacquiao me personally again just like uh Eagle just said I, I think it's a little soon for that. What you think, D? Well, see, this this is my thing, and and uh -oh. I, I want to see. I I don't know when when Eagle said it's premature. I still don't know if he means it's premature just for Terrence Crawford, mm -hmm. or or uh, vice versa, or or mutual. Um, I, I guess I'm assuming you guys are both talking about premature uh -huh. for Terrence Crawford yeah, to, well, to step we, up. We, we can I wanna, let, we let, let, let Eagle elucidate. I mean, it's I mean it's premature for for Crawford for sure. Yeah, and, and that's what you were saying, right, Eagle? That it's premature for Crawford. Eagle. Basically, I think okay. I think we're we're just in a situation where a fighter has a good win, like Chris Algeri. You just interviewed him, uh -huh. he had a good win win against Ruzan Provotnikov, hard fought, and now people are talking about Chris Algeri and Pacquiao. Yeah. Like these guys have been in their division, maybe one division up, and then move them along when the time is right. Like let him build his brand. Yeah, I I, I, I have no problem with that. No, I, I was just saying I truly think though with um. With Crawford, I mean, if we're just talking about weight, because I know a lot of people saying, you know, yeah, he shouldn't jump on weight too quick. But I, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Crawford, he actually came in the ring at 152 pounds when he fought against uh, Manny Pacquiao. So the dude is big. You know, I, I, I personally think that at 140 that um, Crawford will come in there feeling very natural and it would be a huge fight. I mean, you know, give and take, uh, yeah, it could be a little premature. But at the same time, um, Bob Arum, he doesn't really have a whole lot of options to make. I know, um, and we're kind of jumping, but I might as well get into it. I know um, Bob Arum, he, uh, he's looking at um, Amir Khan right now. Eagle, let me ask you this. What, who Much do you want to see? Yeah, who do you want to see Pacquiao fight next? What makes more sense? My personal opinion, I just don't want to see a recycle rematch. I think matches with Timothy Bradley, we've seen it twice. Matches with Marquez, we've seen it four times. And those are rivalries you can build upon later. Let these fresh faces fight. Um, really, anyone, I hope they can get a fight. They're talking about making a potential fight with Amir Khan in Macau, China. I think that's big. you got the Asian demographic. you got guys like Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, 
I don't know if the Porter Kill Brook is, is officially situated, but really mm-hmm. any fresh faces, I would really want to see Pacquiao fight or Mayweather, of course. I mean, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even, hopefully, so, well, let, go ahead. Now, go ahead. Let, let me just ask you the. Uh, uh, here I go asking questions. No, hey, <laughs> man, that's what we do. That's what we do. Who? What do you want to see next? For, do you do you think that that should be Crawford's next fight as Pacquiao? Hey, man, I concur with what exactly what Eagle said. Mm. As long as it's not a, another, you know, mm. rerun, mm. you mm. know, Pacquiao versus Marquez, fifth, mm. sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. You know, I mean, I, honestly, I wouldn't mind um, a third fight with Tim Bradley, but um, I want to see some new. I want to see new faces for Manny Pacquiao. I've said this for the longest. I truly believe that anybody that Manny Pacquiao faces from this point on, it is a, either a 50-50 fight or maybe even a 60-40 fight against Manny Pacquiao. I mean, uh, I'm looking at Chris Algieri, of course, Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, Amir Khan, um, who else? Anybody else in that? Even Danny Garcia. I think these are all difficult fights for Manny Pacquiao. I would love to see Khan. I would love to see Khan. I, I, I would love to see Khan. I mean, a lot of people keep talking about, oh, Khan doesn't have a chin. But I, I'm going to just say this real quick, lay it out there. A lot of people don't realize, in, in a way, Khan, you can almost say, is somewhat like a Vladimir Klitschko, okay? Vladimir Klitschko doesn't have a good chin. And he acknowledges he doesn't have a chin. And what does he say? He says, yeah, I don't really have a good chin, but guess what? You ain't going to touch that chin, right? <laughs> and, and the whole thing with Amir Khan is, a lot of times he's been hurt and knocked out. It's always been by the left hook or a right hook, one of those hooks. Manny Pacquiao is not a hooker. Manny Pacquiao is a straight puncher. He's a, he's a left-hand puncher, and all a Khan has to worry about is his left hand. Mm-hmm. He has great foot movement. He has a tremendous height advantage over Manny mm-hmm. Pacquiao, and therefore I see a complete competitive matchup. Uh, absolutely. I think uh, Pacquiao and Khan – is a great matchup, like you said. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you said Khan is a little bit soft on the beard, but I don't want to see uh, Crawford Pacquiao next. You know, I want to see Crawford do his thing at 135. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's just some comp down there. You know, establish his, you know what I mean, his ground. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, no need to, to, to rush him, or, uh, you know, along, bring him along too fast. That's not what I want to see next for Crawford. For, okay. for, for Pacquiao, you know, whatever. He's already established. You know, go ahead and do his thing. But for Crawford, I, I don't want to see that fight next. Yeah. And I, I definitely agree with that because you look at Danny Garcia, he was moving through the ranks at a comfortable pace. And in his last fight, he got in there with Mauricio Herrera and had problems with that jab. So when you put these fighters, these younger fighters, in with a guy like a Pacquiao or a Mayweather, depending, despite how they look coming up, he, you never know. You just never mm-hmm. know. So sure. I would rather him get that pro experience, move up comfortably mm-hmm. for Terrence Crawford. Um, fight. There's a lot of guys. Even at 135, he can fight Richard Brill. Exactly. Just put him in there with different styles. Exactly. Because like Miguel I said, Vasquez. Danny Garcia yeah. fight. Yeah. 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 And Miguel it, Vasquez. Yeah. He just signed to Al Heyman. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of terrific yeah. fights that exactly. he made exactly. at 135 yeah, I, I, for him, or even 140. Yep. And I, I think that Richard Brill fight would be great for uh, for Crawford. I mean, uh, Richard just beat um, uh, Bogari. You know, or or beat Bulgari. Yeah, talking he, about Richard Brill. He, yeah, he had a a win over Sharif Bulgari yeah, uh-huh. and uh, Bulgari and um, and Crawford. They had a win over you know, Rios when he was undefeated. Yeah, you know I mean, exactly, uncounted for. But yeah, he definitely got had a win over Rios. And um, I know Bulgari and uh, and uh, Crawford. They have history, sparring history. So you know that that's again that's a way you go ahead and clean out your division. You know what I mean? Take yeah. it back to the old school like that. And oh. uh, and just just um, last thing. One of the key things that Eagle just said, so small but so um, <clears throat> so pivotal, is experience. You know what I mean? You always hear Mayweather say that. You know, at yeah. this level, experience counts. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So 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 let let him. You know, like you said, let him let him build his his brand up. Yeah, well, and, and we talked about it earlier, Nora, and I might as well just throw it out there, <laughs> man. I truly believe, regardless if it's, regardless if it's today 
or later on, I think Crawford beats Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. And I know you disagree with me. You can you mm -hmm. let everybody know why. But I truly believe that someone, if Crawford could get in the ring with somebody like Gamboa, mm -hmm. with the type of speed, mm -hmm. the slickness and the rhythm that a Gamboa has, and figure him out. With, with Manny Pacquiao, all he has to figure out is Manny Pacquiao has a good-ass left hand. Mm -hmm. You know, he has mm -hmm. a good-ass left hand. He moves around the ring a lot, but he lacks the defense. I truly believe that with Crawford, the fact that he could switch from southpaw to, mm -hmm. and, he can, and he can bust you in the face with the jab from both stance, mm -hmm. you know, he'll pull back. Manny Pacquiao, he makes the same mistakes that Gamboa makes, which is leaning in with his head sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, what, that's what got Gamboa. Gamboa, he comes in, you know, with his head. Crawford pulled back, caught him with a check hook. Pacquiao does the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. He, You know, he's not accustomed to fighting against tall fighters. So I truly believe that Crawford will win that fight. What what, what you think, Norrin? I think that because a lot of guys that are smart in the ring, that are thinkers, just like um, Crawford has shown himself to be, they tend to, not always, but they tend to start off kind of slow. And I think those, you know, those first three, four rounds where he's trying to figure Pacquiao out, a lot of damage can be done. Obviously, Crawford ain't nobody's soft touch. But, you know, he, he could get touched. You know, uh, um, Gamboa was boxing him, you know, boxing him up pretty good in those first three, four rounds. Yeah. And uh, if that's Pacquiao, you know, like you said, hitting you with that straight left, you know, over and over and you're feeling that power, you know, you can you can definitely get um, disconcerted in the ring. You know what I mean? Lose your game plan, lose your focus. You know what I mean? Then, you know, things start to unravel. So based on that, a, a lot based on experience, you know, a lot based on experience. I would I would give Pacquiao the edge definitely at this point. Yeah, you know I mean I I would have to see um, Terrence go out there and you know prove himself over and over a few more times. Can he be um, exceptional consistently? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. What we what we talk about often. You know what I mean? Guys go in, they have an exceptional performance, but can do it consistently. You know, over a span of time, over you know duration. So that's that's what I like to see. But I think right now I think I think Pacquiao gets him. Okay, we, we definitely got to disagree on that one, Nora. Oh, <laughs> shit. It's all, it's all good, though. That's what it's about. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of contrast. Ain't nothing wrong, baby. Let's let's go ahead and, um, and, and, and jump into Did you want to say something on that, Eagle? Yeah, well, how, how Eagle? How no, do you I see just, it? I'm, okay, okay. It's all good. No doubt. Yeah, I'm, yeah I, I just I see it the same way as I would you know, favor Pacquiao in that fight. Okay. Just over experience Interesting. and the bigger person. Interesting. No, no Nothing wrong with that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, topic. Um, this is probably the biggest news up to date, which is Mayweather's next opponent. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mayweather, um, he just recently announced that his next opponent is going to be Marcos Maidana. Of course. Now, <laughs> I, I have so much to talk about when it comes to this. We got to talk about the casual, the decafs. Decafs in the house. The dumb casual-ass fans. But uh, we'll, we'll get to that uh, in, in, in a minute. Uh, Ego, what do you think about this fight, man? Is this the best move to be made? Uh, Marcos uh, Maidana being Mayweather's next opponent? Absolutely. There's an old saying that goes, you're damned if you do. You're damned if you do. You're damned, damned if, if you, you don't. don't. That's what it is. With Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think we got a little lag. Um, I was trying to say it at the same time you said it. <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> Yeah, so I said there's an old saying, you're damned if you don't, you're damned if you do. And that's really the situation that Mayweather has been in. He fights a champion like Marcos Maidana last outing, people complain. No one else in the really in the sport can fight a champion in their division and hear several complaint, complaints about, oh, it's a cherry pick fight. So really I think it's a catch-22 for Mayweather. If he didn't take the Marcos Maidana fight, they'll say, oh, you got roughed up, it was a tougher fight. Some people think Marcos Maidana won that fight, so he would be accused of ducking Marcos Maidana in a rematch to fight Amir Khan or whoever else he selected. So if he does pick uh, Marcos Maidana, then some people say, oh, why is he fighting him? It's a cherry pick fight, slow, flat-footed. So um, either way, he has to shut the critics up, and it's similar to the Castillo fight. He heard the complaints. He thought he won, but he still heard the complaints from, I guess, the crowd or the commentators or whoever. And the same year, he went in and fought Castillo, in a rematch, so I think that's kind of what he's doing here based on the outcry and, and the people that feel Maidana won or didn't get his gloves. He's trying to set the record straight. Yeah. So is is there any way he can please these casual fans, Norn, or what? Oh, hell no. 
Hell no. We're talking about Mayweather, the most hated man in the history. Let me stop. No, nah, no, nah, absolutely not. And, and, and there's another old saying. There's another old saying. You can't please everybody. Please yourself. And um, the thing is, you know, basically you just got to do not, it's not only pleasing yourself, but do what makes sense. You know what I mean? And, and, and what's the right thing to do? Listen. Like you said, catch. Let's talk about catch twenty twos. I'm I'm gonna take it from a whole nother perspective, right? All right, All right. we we talk about Pacquiao. You you basically can't mention Mayweather without Pacquiao. You know, thanks to Bob Arum. You know, he's very good at being a spin galley. You know what I mean? So Pacquiao doesn't. All right, we you know guys like us, we criticize him, of course, with you know the four times with Marquez. You know, and again, he's seems like he's building this rivalry now with uh with Bradley possibly. But here's the thing about Mayweather. When he does rematch someone, which he's only had one rematch in his professional career, he takes it immediately after the initial fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where is the, you know what I mean? Again, where's the double standard back to Pacquiao? You know what I mean? A guy waits. How many times? You know, him and Marquez fought again, like I always say, four times over the course of a decade. Mm -hmm. You know, Floyd takes his rematches immediately. Yeah. Hey, if, if the guy gives me a tough fight, and the fans are saying, hey, this, you know what I mean? This guy did better than expected. Or, you know, hey, Floyd really lost this one. Mayweather really lost this one. He goes back and rematches him. And let's, hey, let's, let's get it right this time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So where's the credit for that? And they still don't give him credit and for of that. Of course not. Of course not. So um, I love the fact that he's going to be fighting Maidana again in September. Um, Maidana went out there and, you know, put on a great performance. And, and Floyd's going to give him another shot. Now, let's let's see what happens in, in, in this one. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fight. Yeah, me too. I mean, the politics are ridiculous, or I should say the double standards. That's cold word for double standards. The politics we are got, ridiculous. We got a lot of cold words. Oh, a whole lot of them, don't we? And we, <laughs> and as the years go on, we're going to have a, a dictionary. True indeed. But, um, no, this is the whole thing, man. It's funny, too, because I, I was talking to a guy at the gym, and, and believe it or not, this dude is a boxing trainer, right? Hmm. And it's crazy when you think at first you're talking boxing with somebody. Then you realize, wait a minute, this is something different. This is I hate Floyd Mayweather and I can't stand him, right? Because, mm -mm. you know, at first I'm thinking he's making sense, but then he go into the decaf mode, right? <laughs> and um, he basically, what did he say? First he started off by saying, yeah, but, you know, Mayweather, he don't give nobody no rematches. Mayweather don't give nobody no rematches. And I said, well, what about the Castillo fight? And he said, oh, well, well, you know, he only gave him that rematch because he knew that, that um, Castillo wasn't going to be the same emotionally, psychologically, because he felt he was robbed in the first fight. Once he said that, I wow. said, okay, we can't have this conversation wow. no more. I mean, because now, you, I said, so you basically said, he damned if he do, he damned if he don't. If he give a, if he gives somebody a rematch, you're going to say, oh, he only did that for this reason. If he don't give him a rematch, so I can't wait to see what he says, what, what he says when he finds out that Mayweather gave Maidana a rematch. The old, that's going to be his excuse now, the, right? The, the old psychological trauma. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's another one we got to add to the lexicon. Like we got to think of a word, <laughs> think of a word for that. Yeah, he's going to be psychologically traumatized. Yeah. Psychologically yeah. traumatized, mm -hmm. emotionally attached. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we we know what time it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, go ahead, go ahead, Ego. Oh, I was just going to say one thing I find pretty amusing, too, about the fickle boxing fans of this generation is some people were leaving comments on the videos and talking, saying Marcos Maidana did better than Miguel Cotto in the fight, and it was a closer fight, and Maidana won. And some of those same people are the ones that are anti this fight happening in a rematch. So it's like, which one is it? Take your pick. Did Marcos Maidana beat him? Because if he did, then why wouldn't you want to see him get vindication and, mm -hmm. and get the, the judgment or get the the win. It, yeah. Uh, and, and, and listen, if he was rematching Cotto, you know what they'd say? Regardless of Cotto's win over over uh, over Martinez, they'd still be saying, oh, he's fighting Cotto, he's old. Yeah. They'd say, oh, the only reason Cotto beat Martinez is because Martinez had the bum knee. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They'd yeah. be make, the, yeah. the excuses, like you said, are already prefabricated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and now we're starting to get – Ego uh, ridiculousness. And yes. Yeah, I want to know. Do you guys notice the the trend where it's, it's a lot of politics where basically one person he throws out the red meat to the dumbass fans. They all catch. They all catch it. They all eat it up. They spread it. Start saying the exact same thing. Now the new thing that they're starting to say about Mayweather. I just told you. Now everyone's starting to say Floyd Mayweather. He don't give people rematches. Now I'm starting to hear a lot of people say, I just want him out of the sport. 
<laughs> Eagle, are you starting to hear this a lot? I just want them out of the sport. It's To me, it's like they waving a the white flag now. It's gotten to the point where they don't even want to see him even be beat because they feel he won't get beat. Are you hearing this a lot, Eagle? Yeah, I mean, the double standards have always been there. It's it's just fan fair, fan favorites. Uh, sometimes it's just natural heritage. You got guys like Adam Amadeus who pulled out of the Johnny Gonzalez fight. You got Marquez who was being called out by Ruslan when he had the belt, and he didn't want that fight. He said the Ruslan fight didn't make sense. However, if it's a fighter that you don't like, i.e., whether whoever that person is, then if they don't take a certain fight, it's because they're ducking. Mm-hmm. Yet people will make excuses for why Marquez didn't fight Ruslan when he had the belt and when he was being called out and they're in the same division. So the double standards are always going to be there. It's just based on favoritism. You had Sergio Martinez and Cotto, and they said on the HBO 24-7, that Miguel Cotto, Team Cotto, did not want Sergio Martinez to use that knee brace, even though he's coming off of an injury. Yeah. Yet you have Marcos Maidana and Floyd Mayweather, and they had the glove controversy. Absolutely. And people were saying it's because Mayweather's scared. He won't let Maidana wear his glove of choice. But Cotto, who's a humble dude, I like Cotto. I'm a longtime supporter of Cotto. He didn't want Sergio Martinez to wear that knee brace, and that's acceptable. But mm-hmm. if Mayweather doesn't want to wear, uh, let May- Maidana wear the certain gloves because the first ones look tampered with, then it's because he's chicken or he's ducking. So, yeah. I mean, come to the territory. You can love him or you hate him, and you're going to make excuses for it. Yeah. Sheer but buffoonery. When, but, when you keep, but when you keep winning, you can't be denied. They, they can hate all you want, but you keep winning, you will not be denied. So um, I was just going to say, uh, you know, the uh, Klitschko's, They've been dominating the heavyweight division, you know, for just about as long as, as uh, Mayweather's been, um, you know, world champion. You know, they they all had that same kind of span of, um, you know, being at the top of the sport. And I never say, you know, oh, I just want them to get out. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. I want I want yeah. I want to see somebody beat them, or I want to see them keep doing their thing. Exactly. You, know you I mean? don't you don't never say, regardless if you like somebody. Or not. I don't, you know, if, if I don't like Abner Morris, if I don't, I, I wasn't too crazy about Fernando Vargas. Just you know, quit. Because, Just quit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but real talk. But real talk. I ain't never said, I, I want that motherfucker to retire. Just leave. I want him to retire. I want him to quit. And I never done that. Boom. Norn. <laughs> Norn. Bones. Norn. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let, let's talk about fans, man. Let's talk about. Decafs. Yeah, yeah. Now. Fans, I'm hearing a lot of people. Certain people, you'll hear somebody say, "Oh, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm a fan of uh, Mikey Garcia. You know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I love me some Chavez. Mm-hmm. Walk down the street with a Manny Pacquiao shirt. Mm-hmm. Why is it you can't say I like Floyd Mayweather? I think he's a great fighter. I think he's the best fighter of this era. So on and so forth. How come you can say this about other fighters, but you cannot say that about Floyd Mayweather?" Mm. I'm writing a book about it, actually. Yeah, it's called the social politics Drop of the it. sweet science. Um, Ego, let's let's hear let's hear how how you um assess this um this situation. How you feel about that, bro? So my my personal take on it, I think it just shows you're an elite level. You achieved greatness, and people don't like it because they start bringing up a whole bunch of stuff that really has nothing to do with boxing, court cases, or jail time, or oh, he burned money, or you know what I mean? Just yeah. stuff that has nothing to do with the scope of boxing. And oh, when you've achieved greatness, and you can look historically from Michael Jordan to, like, even LeBron nowadays, let's say LeBron shoots and he has 21 points, four assists, just overall good, better-than-average statistics. Those statistics, since they're not what LeBron's maybe capable of doing, all of a sudden it's because LeBron sucks or he's overrated. So you get measured on a higher a different standard, a different totem pole than other people. So as far as the you can't be a Mayweather fan, it's just I think ultimately he's dictated and he's had longevity in the sport, and people don't like that. They, there's a lot of fresh faces, the Canelos and Danny Garcia's, different people, and people do not want to see you on top for as long. I mean, he's been in the sport 18 years, guys, mm-hmm. and they don't want to see that. They don't want to see someone go undefeated. Plus, mm-hmm. to add to it, he's cocky, or you know what I mean? He lets you know that he knows he's good. So yeah, yeah. I think ultimately that's why people, you know, because they always talk about Miguel Cotto. Oh, he's, Cotto doesn't say much. He's nice. And these are all true. These are true things. He's very humble. But Cotto's a respected champion, and I think Mayweather should be as well. It's just a lot of uh, personal banter and dislike for stylistic stuff outside of the ring, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. I'm going to add on to that. 
Um, I think all those um, uh, variables definitely play a factor. But I think there's also um, some social commentary that's, you know, that's being stated without being said, you know, which is also behind a lot of the, um, you know, the discredit that uh, Mayweather receives. And um, let me say, uh, let me see how I can put it. Um, okay. The media, Bob Arum, it has a lot to do with it. There's something that I, I like to, there's a term that I, we put this in our, in our lexicon too, the, um, there's something I like to call the expectation of capitulation, where there's a certain um, individual or even a certain demographic that's expected to yield to other portions of the demographic it's 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 just a social expectation yeah. because you know we've just been socially conditioned well not me but you know what <laughs> i mean the the masses the population has been socially conditioned you know to accept it like oh well that's just the way it is so you know when we had the um the whole uh um uh contratom with um you know the blood testing and all that it was just kind of expected that you know floyd just just give in just fight you know what I mean? Just yeah, fight. Yeah. Oh, you coward. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. why should he yield from his stance? And again, his stance proved to be correct, just like Ali didn't yield from his stance, you know, with the uh, with the Vietnam War. So uh, that has a lot, a lot to do with it. You know what I mean? And like I said, I really want to go into detail, um, you know, when I uh, put this, uh, publish this, um, this uh, work uh, that I'm in engaged in. And, and you know, if you want to understand it even more, um, go back, um, go home and watch the Jack Johnson documentary. For sure, I'll just leave it at that. For sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, you know, I, I want to add one last thing. You know, one thing that I I do find funny with this, like when you when we talk about Mayweather, is Mayweather again. He's kind of held to that different standard of what he can do and what's accepted, and it's all all about just overall favoritism. Because if you look at Pacquiao's recent fights, he's actually been boxing a lot more and doing more boxing than vintage Pacquiao, yet you look at Mayweather, and I would say in his recent fights, like the Cotto fight and the fight with Maidana, he's actually been going toe-to-toe -to -toe a lot more. People mm -hmm. said he was a runner, and he uses nothing but lateral movement, he runs around the ring, and he's been giving you large chunks, like the Maidana fight, mm -hmm. large chunks where he's just toe-to-toe -to -toe in pocket on the ropes. I was watching the fight, like, man, he's been on the ropes a little too long, and Nothing is acceptable. It's it's always you know what I mean it's exactly. always going to be a problem. And, and giving you the toe to toe is still a problem. Yeah. And let me let me add on this to also what Eagle was saying previously is that it's also just like he was saying. Uh, you know when a guy is so successful for so long and people just get tired of it, it's also something. Again, this is we're, we're dealing with a, a lot of social conditioning and psychological trauma like like your, 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 <laughs> like your boy was talking yes, in the sir. gym but um yes, it's it's also the um the acceptance you know the acceptance or the uh the expectancy of mediocrity of uh, mediocrity you know what i mean like oh you know you can't be perfect well, why not you know what yeah. i mean why not well at least let's strive for it at least you, yeah. you know what i mean so again these things that have been socially induced you know within the within the uh you know the um the collective consciousness or the psyche of the population you know play a heavy factor in in the things we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis um dealing with boxing and particularly with mayweather right now you know what i mean it's been going on you know what i mean since you know since the inception of the sport but you know he's the one that's that's carrying the torch for the sport obviously right now so he's the one that that's, that has to deal with it but um yeah it's, it's something that's historically rooted yeah and, and and this is my thing what i don't understand is how come these type of fans who think this way, how come they just don't come out and just say, I don't like the dude? I mean, he, he, he's good. I don't think nobody's going to beat him. He's talented as hell. I just don't like him. I can't stand him. And leave it at that. Why you got to keep making all of these points that are irrelevant, like like Eagle said, talking about personal shit? You know, I told people a long time ago, if I had a, you know, a heart surgeon who gave me a new heart, you think I give a damn about him cheating on his wife or whatever and all that kind of stuff? No. I'm, I'm happy I'm happy for what you did for saving my damn life. You, I, I don't give a damn what you do outside of giving me a new damn heart. Know why they don't you just know? come out and say it? Why? Because, <laughs> again, social. <laughs> then they'll be, they have a fear. It's acknowledgement. Exactly. And they don't want to be labeled as a hater. 
Yeah, you understand? Yeah. They got it. They got to. They got to cover it up. They got to give some excuse. But it's better to be honest, though. I I think it's better. And y'all, duh, you get my approval duh. to the decals out there. You get my approval. You can be honest, and we gonna accept you. You can come home. Just say you don't like the guy. <laughs> stop Just making you don't like him. Stop. Stop. Hey, stop with that bullshit. What? <laughs> Go ahead, Eagle. One thing I was gonna say. One thing I do notice about boxing is it's more of an individual sport as opposed to like a football or team sport, something with more players. And one of the things that's funny is the boxing fans are so fickle where if it's something they don't like, like Floyd Mayweather or whatever, fighter Canelo, Pacquiao, but they continually watch it. Mm-hmm. Me, I don't listen to One Direction or Justin Bieber, so I don't go out and buy their CDs. But it's like me, I <laughs> One Direction, Justin Bieber, every CD, every mixtape, every movie they're in, <laughs> just to complain about it. And that's what you get with the some of the modern day boxing fans. They complain about fighter X, Y, and Z, but they keep watching that fighter. They keep True, going to the forums with, with with the title and it says that fighter's name. Like I just I never understood that. If it's something I don't like, I usually just pay it no mind. There yeah. you go. And, and, there and, you go. And, and as a boxing as a as a real boxing fan, it's like. You know, I just want to see great fights. And, yes, I do have favorite fighters. Duh. I have favorite basketball players, favorite yeah. football players. Of course, I got favorite boxers as well. Duh. But uh, I just got one question. What the fuck is a Justin Bieber? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? Hey, man. No comment, right? No okay. comment. All right, no, no doubt. Comment. No doubt. Save it, oh, yeah. save it, all, save it, all for, the I lex- know, save it for the lexicon. All I know is I know what Justin Bieber want to be when he grow up and, and what organization he want to join. <laughs> That's all, I'll leave it at that, uh, for New York Athletic Commission. Nice. So nice. what that suggests is it just may be possible he may be fighting in Brooklyn against mm. Marcos Maidana. Brother yeah. in Madison or, or, or Brooklyn, and then maybe even Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I know, I, I know he, he's um, many times he's voiced his uh, desire to fight in, in MSG. And now, like I said, with uh, Barkley being right there in Brooklyn, no, right. hey, I mean that would be great. And you talking great. To, and you talking about having a fan base that mm. loves Floyd Mayweather, Please. appreciates Please. what he does. Already. You know, he Already. will be he will be like Michael Jordan in Chicago, you know. That's pretty much how it would be. Uh what you think? How big is that, Ego? I mean, first let me shout out all the boxing fans across the world. I've been very impressed with the crowd participation. I mean, from the George Groves Call Fox rematch, uh-huh. only eighty thousand people. Terrence Crawford came back for the hometown. Like, I've seen hometown events where it wasn't 10,000 people, mm-hmm. and they had to give away a bunch of free tickets. That crowd was elect- electric. Uh, Miguel Cotto, his second home, New York, when he fought Cotto. Just tremendous crowd. So if Mayweather does make the jump and fights on the East Coast, I think it'll be a big, big thing because it's a different demographic that he can reach out to. Mm-hmm. And he only has a couple fights left in the can, so he says. People want to see him, and it'll just give those fighters. I know a lot of people that they want to see Demetrius, Andre, Brian Rose when they're at the Barclays or the different fights at the Barclays. So now to give them an opportunity to see Mayweather, and I think that's always good for boxing, just to get out of the comfort zones. Um, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, it, it would be keyword, just like you said, Eagle, it would be electric. Mm-hmm. It, it would be huge if Mayweather fights in New York, and I think that if he fights out there, he may get addicted to it. When he, but then again, he already knows because when he does press conferences in New York, oh, absolutely. they sh- they show up and they turn up and they turn out, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, and I know, yeah, you know, okay, my, my sure. man Norrin straight from New York. What part of New York are you from, man? Brooklyn? There you go. There you in go. In the house. Oh. In the house. And 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 who you said is performing out here September thirteenth when Floyd Mayweather is fighting against uh, Maidana possibly? Who ain't nothing to fuck with? Woo, <laughs> woo! Bring <laughs> the ruckus. Wu Tang Clan, baby. Man, bring the ruckus may be in the building. We may try to get him up here in the show. Classic. Yeah, man. We're going to try to get him at the Box Fan Expo as well, man. So September 13th for that one. So um, anyway, man, and just real quick, guys, um, let's jump into the um, heavyweight news just real quick. Bermain Stavern is finally got – he's finally coming out. I'm trying to find a way to say this in a nice way because yeah. I almost, you know, got too brutal on him. But he's finally saying he wants to fight Deontay Wilder. I think that is a, that's an unbelievable fight. It's a resurrection of the heavyweight division. This is the type of fight we need. How do you see that fight playing out, uh, Ego? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> first, I would love for that fight. It's a difference of styles. You've got Deontay Wilder, who's huge, and exactly. he has the longer reach and everything. 
but he's vastly untested. A lot of people, see, this is why I got to give credit. Deontay Wilder 